We got an update for Throne and Liberty, and it's a little bit surprising because it actually might be good. Now, all of these updates are coming from the producer's letters of NCSoft, which is originally in Korean. So it's actually, you know, there may be some issues with translation here, but we're doing the best we can here. In past updates, we heard about how they were updating combat. One of the biggest gripes players had over Throne and Liberty from the closed beta test was just how the combat was static and clunky. To many, it seemed like a step back from even the older tab target MMOs like World of Warcraft and EverQuest with the need to channel abilities and stay still, especially when it came to melee abilities. This appears to be remedied and NCSoft is eager to show it off with a video showing more fluid and engaging combat, an entire section of the producer's letter dedicated to demonstrating the changes they've made so far, including these points. Overall combat system has been changed to allow attacks while moving. The inertia effect applied while changing direction has been minimized to increase responsiveness and operation. Address skills to create more dynamics and player decision making, including direction based skills or specific location targeting in addition to tab target skills. They also increased the number of skills initially provided to the player and increased the learning speed of new skills. Much of this was done to reduce some of the monotony that players felt early on when they were playing the game. Honestly, what players were playing when they were playing the closed beta. In addition to these, they're trying to make the weapon swapping element of Throne and Liberty more seamless, which you can see in this video here. Take a look right here where they're they switch to the great sword in really just one fluid moment and a motion just leading into another attack. It really does seem seamless, perhaps even more so than other MMOs that offer weapon swapping. But in an understated change that may be seen positively or negatively, depending on players views on stats and MMOs, the entire stat system for weapons has been overhauled so that the individual stats all affect the attack powers of all weapons. This is interesting to to say it mildly. It feels a bit like an oversimplification of a system, but Throne and Liberty does seem to be trying to make a game where you can can really pl like play the style that you want to play. And I guess this works into that by reducing barriers usually associated with, well, if you're going to be using a spear, it requires this stat. If you're going to be using a great sword, it requires this stat. I have to see how that actually plays out and just how how much this is, because again, this could be another thing that is somewhat mistranslated in the in the letter, but we'll just have to see. But much of this we actually already knew. We knew that Throne and Liberty had been working on this combat, and it was one of those things that is just adding detail and actually showing us what it looks like. And it does look pretty damn good. It looks pretty fun. It's the next part, though, that came as a complete shock to me, a shock that I really wasn't like wasn't prepared for. After all, I had just basically done almost two videos on the subject about how they one didn't mention it and then two how they were clinging to autoplay. Well, we got an update on that and it actually may be making me have a little bit like a, a little shred of hope back in Throne and Liberty. The tone that we got from this letter is starkly different from the updates we got from AGS as recently as Gamescom. Auto hunting and auto movement have been completely removed. Not temporarily disabled awaiting feedback. Removed. But it goes further because to remove a feature like this from the game, that would mean they either have to make adjustments to their grind calculations or leave it at is and potentially make the game feel too arduous and grindy for many players. So they've updated the content types to increase rewards for adventure codex, exploration codex, and regional events, as well as increasing the number and variety of missions. They've also reduced the proportion of hunting in the growth section, which I believe is referring to the grind required that obviously would have been supplemented by auto hunting in the previous system. Beyond that, they're working on adding instance dungeons with bosses, which I mean, holy fuck, they were just now thinking about adding dungeons with bosses. It's going to be a very different MMO type, I guess. But it does sound like they're at least adding them now. So I guess that's a good thing, right? Just kind of sucks that it feels a little bit like an afterthought. This all sounds great, or at least good anyway. 
But there are a few things I want to highlight still as, as a bit of concern. NCSoft appears to be patting themselves on the back by removing autoplay, stating they were boldly removing it, in large part because auto hunting and autoplay is, quote, as the history of the genre accumulated over a long period of time, we decided that the existence of an automatic hunting system was increasingly recognized as a natural thing in MMORPGs, and we also followed that trend and introduced automatic hunting. This, I think, highlights the struggle in adapting to an MMORPG genre that has traditionally split in developments and the need to research thoroughly in the markets you wish to launch in. Autoplay and auto movement features beyond auto run in a straight line, of course, are an anathema to Western audiences and are routinely pointed out as being a waste or a gimmick or really something that you would normally see in a mobile game, not in a actual full fledged PC MMO. Something they do talk about when they're talking about this autoplay is the fact that it's a mouse and keyboard MMO. So I do think they are at least aware in NCSoft that the way that a lot of Western, a lot of the Western audience looks at this is autoplay is for mobile games. You don't put that shit in your, your PC MMORPGs. But this got me thinking just about autoplay in general. It's one of those things that it feels like it would be a good thing. If you are a person who has a nine to five job, who has a family, who has other obligations, who really just doesn't have the time to invest in an MRPG anymore, but you still want to be able to keep up with everyone else playing the game, to be able to do things and, and have fun in the game when you do have that, that little sliver of time, that somehow this autoplay feature would mean that the MMORPG is actually respecting your time a little bit more. But it's not. It's actually not. Because what's what happens when you have a feature like this is the game gets balanced around that. The game gets balanced around the idea that the majority or a large portion of the players are going to be making use of this feature. But there will also be other players who are still going crazy with the grinds. So it doesn't actually seem to add much. It just adds another another thing on the checklist to take off. But the worst part of it, the worst part that that I have kept, I have been trying to say about Throne and Liberty for so long is what we saw in the battle pass. The fact that we saw that they would have a offline autoplay that was tied to the premium path of that that battle pass, thus essentially making the game instantly pay to win because you could grind offline only if you paid to grind offline. And that would mean that the game is built around this idea of a very grindy game that requires you to not gives you the option to, but requires some sort of grind that is that is supplemented and calculated with this in mind. It is not it is not like your favorite MMO that you currently play, adding in an autoplay feature it is a game built from the ground up with that calculated into their grind time. Autoplay does not solve the problem of an MMO not respecting your time. It just covers it in stickers that say good job. But that's a subject for another day, and it looks like we may actually be getting Throne of Liberty in the West or even in, in, the, the, in the global version that doesn't have autoplay. It seems like NCSoft is actually looking at the feedback regarding autoplay and saying, no, nope, that we're not going to do it, which is good news. I don't think there's really any other way to look at it. It kind of sucks that it was there in the first place. But at least there's some good news happening with this game because it's been a while where every time I felt like I'm making a video about Throne and Liberty, I feel bad because it's all it's all bad news. And I feel like I'm trying to like bang that drum of like, well, be careful of this because of this thing that they're saying. And now I actually get to say, hey, I'm uh, I'm still like, like there's just a little bit more excitement for me in 2024 trying it. There's not a ton of games that are coming out anytime soon, so hopefully this one will be good because we need a good MMO <laughs> of any kind. I, I don't really care where it comes from. I just want a good MMO that will engage and make people enjoy the genre again. That's all I, all I want. That's all I got, though. Cheers. Have a wonderful day. My name is Edward Flynn. If you do not know me and you can check out more coverage on Throne and Liberty over in this <laughs> over in this video right here. Thank you so much.